Guys, tell me what this video is on. Of course, you know it is Philip Sidney, the greatest chivalric humanist and courtier of Elizabeth's court. Philip Sidney was 10 years bada bhai to Shakespeare. So when was he born? Of course, in 1554. Shakespeare, 1564. Philip Sidney was born in a very big aristocratic family. His younger sister Mary Herbert became Countess of Pembroke. Sidney was a soldier and he died very young. He got a wound and he died very young. And all the works that he wrote were published only posthumously. None of his works were published in his lifetime. Sidney when he lived was part of a circle of thinkers and scholars and writers. Do you know the name of that circle or group? It is Areopagus. Areopagus. Sidney, I told you, was influential in Queen Elizabeth's court. This Queen Elizabeth occasionally announced that she might marry this nobleman or that nobleman. She managed men and matters. And this was a matter of politics and power. The uh, courtiers could not let her marry whoever she wanted. Sidney once interfered and he was banished from Queen Elizabeth's court. Oh, don't worry, after some time he came back. While he was banished, he lived in Countess of Pembroke's house, his own sister Mary Herbert's house. And that is where he wrote his first major prose romance. What is its name? Arcadia. Arcadia was a classical text based on Sanasaro's Arcadia, published in 1580. Arcadia was a major prose romance. The entire title is Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia. It was written in 1580, published after Sidney died in 1586. Arcadia is the story of Count Basilius, his wife Gynesia, their daughters Pamela and Philoclea and they are in love with two men. This story is taken from Sanazaro's Arcadia and this is a story of love as well as war. Now he is talking about different kinds of love here. He is talking about different kinds of politics here. Sydney completely rewrote Arcadia. There are two versions. Old Arcadia and New Arcadia. It is from New Arcadia that the story of Gloucester has been taken by Shakespeare in King Lear. King Lear has a subplot. The story of blind Gloucester. That is taken from New Arcadia of Sydney. Then there is the sonnet sequence Astrophel and Stella. Astrophel and Stella contains 108 sonnets and 11 songs. Astrophel, Astro means star. Astrophel is star lover. And who is the star? It is Stella. Penelope Devereux, the wife of Lord Rich. This was the courtly love convention. The hero is always in love with somebody else's wife because the love is never consummated. There is no fulfillment. Astrophel and Stella is remembered as the first famous sonnet sequence in English. Did you know Sidney's niece was also a poet, Lady Mary Roth. She has also written a sonnet sequence. It is called Pamphylia to Amphilanthus. Astrophel and Stella is more about the sufferings of the lover than about love itself. And these poems became the foundation for sonneteering in England at this time. Astrophel and Stella has a preface written by the university wit Thomas Nash. Then 
we have to talk about a very important book apology for poetry or defense of poesy as you might know it is a critical work by sydney did you know guys in the renaissance period there was a lot of critical activity there were a group of critics in cambridge they are also called the tudor trio roger ascham thomas wilson john check and there were other critics like george putenham the author of the art of english poesy then there was thomas campion who wrote observations on the art of english poesy he attacked a rhyme there and a reply was written by samuel daniel defense of rhyme it is in this climate of criticism that you should understand or place sydney's apology for poetry it was published under two titles in the same year 1595 apology for poetry was written as a reply to the puritan attack on poetry by stephen gosson stephen gosson attacked the poets pipers players and other cutter pillars of the commonwealth if the commonwealth is the rose these poets are like the caterpillar destroying the rose stephen gosson was a puritan that's why he attacked poetry like that sydney defended poetry he talks about the antiquity of poetry the universality of poetry the wide respectability of poetry and he defines poetry as the art of imitation plato and aristotle both he evoked and he famously said poetry is a speaking picture with the end to teach and delight teach means instruct delights means give pleasure the two functions of poetry and he based his ideas on three italian critics they were all aristotelians mintuerno scaliger and castelvetro based on them sydney said there are three main kinds of poetry religious poetry that praises god philosophical poetry that teaches you and the creative kind the imaginative kind is the true kind the third kind it can be further subdivided into several categories like heroic poetry iambic poetry pastoral poetry epic poetry satiric comic etc all of these kinds have their own uses sydney is praising poetry because he is lamenting that poetry has fallen in its value nobody is using poetry well these days people have an earth creeping mind these days they are not able to look up at the sky of poetry sydney wants to raise the standards of poetry he was a classicist he did not like tragic comedy because he lived before the golden age of tragic comedy that came at the end of the elizabethan period and beginning of the jacobian period and apology for poetry ends with remarks on style versification and diction sydney did not write more he was a great famous man he was a patron of many other poets even edmund spencer dedicated the shepherd's calendar to sydney but he did not write much more than this because he died very young but without philip sydney probably english renaissance would not have been complete i hope you liked this video please read extra enjoy your reading develop a passion for these topics these writers should become like our friends so happy reading until the next video bye bye guys